Joining me tonight in Hollywood, Carlos Diaz, who's a correspondent for Extra and in New York tonight. Jamie Floyd, who's an anchor for In Session. Also joining me in New York is Janelle Snowden, who's a host for VH1 News. And we got to start with this James Bond story. In an interview with the New York Times, Daniel Craig says that not only might it be the right time for a black Bond, but he even says, quote, Obama would be the better Bond because if he's true to his word, he'd be willing to quite literally look the enemy in the eye and go toe to toe with them. Janelle, starting with you, what, uh, what do you think? Does Daniel Craig have that right? Obama? I as knew Bond? I liked this Daniel Craig guy. I knew I liked him. I think he's on to something. I think, you know, Obama has his hands full with running our country. That's a task in and of itself. But if we can clone him somehow and give, you know, a, a more Hollywood version, contrary to what the McCain camp tried to paint him as, it's the celebrity that they said that he was before the campaign and during the campaign, then I think we could be on to something. I mean, I think it's high time that we have a black bond. Carlos, you on board with Janelle and Daniel Craig here? We tried that. Chris Tucker tried to make Double O Soul. That couldn't get made. We had Eddie Griffin uh, in Undercover Brother. That was a great James Bond kind of takeoff. But come on, no one can be better than the original black James Bond. Carl Weathers in Action Jackson, all right? I mean, I, that, that's, a, that's a classic right there. What do you think about this idea, Jamie? Well, I don't think it has to be Barack Obama. As Janelle says, he's very busy, and uh, there are plenty of other handsome, eligible, tall, dark, and, yes, African-American actors out there Amen who could play that. James Bond. And I said decades ago, we need a black Bond. I don't understand. When there was this whole controversy about a blonde Bond, I thought, what's the big deal about that where's the black bond so i think it's time and i certainly think that the image of james bond has evolved to allow for a black bond a latino bond any kind of bond we're ready asian bring it bring well, it well janelle you, you pointed out that obviously barack obama is going to be eh, just a little bit busy for at least the next four years so if not obama then, I don't know, you, you have some ideas for us for who would make the great first black James Bond? I've got a couple, you know, and I have solicited some bribes to, to say these, but um, I'm going to say P. Diddy would make, I think he was born to be the black Bond. I mean, think about it. Has a nice ring. Diddy. What do you, th what do you, what do you <laughs> think wait, about wait, wait, that, Jamie? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, but I'm sorry, also, do we have more? Do yes, you have another? I have another, yes. but, but before that, come on, he already has his own drink. He has his own vodka, so <laughs> there is a Diddy. It's lemonade and vodka. He could shake it. He could stir it. He could do whatever he wants with it. I say Diddy, and if not Diddy, if he's busy, Will Smith, because we all know he brings out the people to the box office. Let me tell you, no matter what the color of James Bond's skin, he's going to drink a, a dry martini. That's how it goes, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Jamie, uh, can you weigh in on this? I sure can. I like the product tie-in, but Bond is rarely a blockbuster Hollywood person like that. It's usually kind of an unknown secret celebrity. So I go with Idris Elba. If you don't know who he is, check him out, because he's a beautiful black man, and he would be a wonderful Bond. And by the way, he already has has the British accent, my next choice would be sort of a superstar, so it's a little bit of a cheat, but Don Cheadle, who yeah. I think uh. would be sort of an unexpected bomb. We know he can do accents brilliantly, and he's terrific in action films. Those are my two top Car picks. Carlos, can I just very say, quickly, I was going to say hold, hold Idris, but did he pay me? Did he pay me? C Sorry. Carlos, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Don Cheadle, I like that's that. All, that's all wrong. That's all wrong. Listen, let me tell you, there's only one choice for a black James Bond, all right? It's Terrence Trent Darby. All right? Oh, I, mean, I love Terrence my Trent man. Darby. Yeah. You can, because he's, uh, he's English and he can sing the theme song, and I'm fairly certain he's available. And so he's wishing on a wishing well. Yeah, I was going to say, you'll have to dig <laughs> into your wishing well. I don't know if he is available, but uh, you can find that out on your own. Let's move on, shall we? Here's another story that is new right now. Brad Pitt appearing on Oprah Tuesday. This interview now reportedly taped before Jennifer Aniston's interview last week. That's where Jen revealed her true feelings about Angelina Jolie hooking up with Brad. What do you think, Janelle? Is it time for Brad to finally tell us how he feels? Because we haven't really heard his side of the story. I don't really think there's any way that he can dig himself out of this one. I mean, the facts remain what they are. And however he hooked up with her, you know, it's water under the bridge. The fact he's with her now. They've got a ton of kids. They're hoping to have some more. So can we just all move on? And can we all just get along in the words of Rodney King? Well, Brad did tell Larry King, not Rodney, but Larry King, that his relationship with Angelina began after they filmed Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and he and Jen had already split up. Angelina later went on to tell Vogue that, well, she couldn't wait to get to the set, and her kids would one day hear the story of how their parents fell madly in love on a movie set. Carlos, doesn't Brad have some splaining to do here? 
He does have some explaining to do. The bad thing is they taped this before the Jennifer Aniston thing. So, AJ, you know, sometimes when you tape an interview and the news breaks, you're like, ah, yeah. can we get him back in and do some <laughs> follow-up questions? And that's the big problem with this situation. Yeah, and Brad is like, Whew. That one, uh, yeah, no, that, that one just skated by. Yeah. Well, we've been asking uh, our show tonight viewers online and on air, Team Aniston versus Team Jolie. Whose side are you on? Look at these results. A whopping 72% voted for Team Aniston, 28% for Team Jolie. And I got to tell you, the Showbiz on call phone lines are flooded. Literally, they're flooded. I had to swim through to get to them. All about Jennifer's <laughs> interview on Oprah. Listen to what Karen from California had to say about the Aniston Jolie wars. Jennifer Aniston needs to stop being so upset with um, Angelina and to look towards Brad. He's the one who cheated on her, and he's the one who allowed another woman in his life while he was still married. He should have handled it better. So this really needs to be between um, Jennifer and Brad, not Jennifer and Angelina. Yeah, Jamie Floyd, what do you think about that? If it's not a big sit-down interview with the media, should Brad have a big sit-down with Jen? and clear the air once and for all. You know, it, what they do in their private lives, and I know these are highly public people, and obviously their celebrity and their great fame and fortune is tied to the public nature of their lives. So, you know, I don't feel too sorry for them that everyone's paying attention, but it is a private matter. And as I say to all my girlfriends who are going through difficult times like this, and they're not public people, dignity. You have to have some dignity. It gets back to our earlier segment on the lessons of Spider-Man. You can't control what's going to happen happen, but you can control your reaction to it. And if you react with dignity, that's the important thing. I think that's important for all three of these people, and I feel for all of them. Jamie Floyd, well said, and thank you for joining us.